you know, puns. You gotta love the puns because this time around it's, you know, you got, you got the old saying, fork in the road. Well, this one, it's a fort in the road. <laughs> How's everyone doing today, guys? My name is Steve Goads, and this is Amphibia, episode 21B, Fort in the Road. So, this is an interesting episode, um, because, sorry, um, this is an interesting episode because, one, adds a new mystery to it, to the world of Amphibia, two, there's a, um, I've, I've heard people talk about how this series is taken, like, there's heavily influenced by Legend of Zelda. And in the first season, I, I could see it. Like, I was like, okay, yeah, I can see it. You know, with the, with the adventures, the, the jokes, the obviously the fights, the places that they've been to. This episode, I'm like, okay, Breath of the Wild is all over this. <laughs> Or at least the um the part the place where they go or are sidetracked on I should say so all this begins so the the episode starts with them finally leaving the valley finally going through the mountain pass and leaving Warwood and entering the re entering in this brand new territory and for the most part it's really intriguing because you know you got you, I mean. They show this, um, did they show this map? Did they show the map? Oh wait, no, the map's in another episode. So, right now we're just going on, we're just going on in the land, we have no idea, so, again, it's a two-week trip, so a lot can be seen in two weeks, and according to Hop Hop, you're only gonna be able to see it from in the wagon, because they are, the, he has made a rule book, um, <laughs> And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest, at first I'm like, oh, this is gonna be like the best the episode where you gotta read the book and you gotta go. No, it's like, F the rules. Like, seriously, rules of the road. Like, some of them make sense, but not all of them. Like, uh, so, um, I really don't want to make, I really don't want to list off all the rules because honestly, I forgot a few because I'm like, okay, that's stupid. And again, it makes sense why Hop Hop would do it because he... This is, he even acknowledges, it, like, this is the first time they're doing this. So, they aren't 100% sure how to handle all of this. And, um, they have all these rules of the road. Obviously, no fun, no side stomps. It's just, they're going straight, it's a straight shot. They're not going to let anything bother them. They're going to just keep going and not stop. And, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, but obviously Sprig, Ann, and Polly are all bored out of their minds. They want, like, there are so many cool places that they pass and they want to actually go out and check them out. But Hop Up's like, nah, 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 nah. Usually fires a roll back at them. And there's even this funny joke, like, they're all coming, the kids are complaining and Hop Up's like, hey, I didn't make the rules. And Ann, like, what do you mean? It's called Hot Pot's Rules of the Road. It's like. <laughs> Ugh. It's so funny. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> oh, man. I really... I mean... Again, it's the comedy that sometimes really makes these episodes. But, um... So, after, you know... Yeah, pretty much part of this episode is Anne and Sprig and Polly pretty much being fed up with the rules. So, Anne and Sprig, they decide that... the next, So, one of the their, the... their most recent location that they're passing... Are called the ruins of despair and just by looking at these i was getting zelda but i was th this was pretty much this is pretty much the episode that told me yep legend of zelda is all over this um because these ruins though they're not ripped right out of zelda they do feel very zelda like on the outside <laughs> because once we go inside i'm like oh my god this feels like this feels like a temple from Breath of the wild <laughs> And it's it's not full on Temple Breath of the Wild though like it's uh, it, it's they they have enough differences to say that but I'm like once this when you enter and look around you do kind of feel that Zelda vibe so um but uh, yeah so Anne and Spurg, like I said they fed up with the rules and so they decide to ditch the wagon and go and check out these ruins and at first it seems like these ruins are just that ruins because they like hop hop even acknowledges that these ruins have been there it's a mystery they've been they've been here they've been here for such a long time yet there's no history on them like they don't know where they where they came from 
very intriguing. You know, it's like, okay, technology, you know, what's this all about? And so Anne and Sprig accidentally stumble into one of the ruins and they find all this technology. They find it's not in, it's not full on technological. Again, this is kind of like Zelda, you know, like how the Breath of the Wild technological they got in, in Legend of in Breath of the Wild. Like that's pretty much what this is. And so they um, it seems like everything is very intriguing, very myth uh, mysterious. And, of course, it's ruined by Hop Hop, who comes in and tells them, like, Do you have any idea how many rolls you just broke? You just broke! And, of course, Sprig, being Sprig, he gets tired of it, and... They're pulling this trope. Um, anytime Sprig sees a lever, he's like, or a, yeah, just like a switch or a lever, he's like, Oh, what's this do? This time around, though, he's, like, looking at this lever, and he's like... He, like, looks at it, and Hop Hop's like, Don't you dare. And even Anne's like, Sprig, don't. And Sprig's just like, I'm gonna pull it. And he does. And at first it seems like nothing's happening, but then obviously something does happen and the temple activates. And it turns out that this temple is a factory. And at first I'm like thinking, I thought the, um, the mother, the, the there was this giant like, uh, mother, uh, computer thing that was there that was, it was in, it was in the middle of the room and I thought that was, I thought that was a giant mech. And I wasn't entirely wrong. Like, it has robotic arms, but it's mounted there. So it's basically the motherboard of the factory, or just the power source. So Sprig is, so Hop Pop, so the, yeah, the factory activates, and Hop Pop accidentally gets tossed into this conveyor belt. And he's slowly, and he's, and in one of the conveyor belts, obviously, is the, like, the crusher thing. So, you know, Anne has to go in and save him while Sprig figures out how to shut down the whole factory. And so, uh, yeah, obviously, you have your wacky hijinks and funny moments. But Sprig is able to shut down the whole system by shoving Hop Hop's rule book into the slot. I love, it's a stupid freaking joke, and a part of me feels kind of hurt by it, because, I mean, I don't know if it's because it shows how old I am, or just how much, how, how much knowledge Anne doesn't have, because I keep, because I'm 20 and Anne's 13, so there's a seven year gap right there, but when, so... The, so Sprig's trying to shut down the machine, and the machine keeps saying, in order to shut down, please insert the disc. Please insert the disc. And so Sprig's like, what's a disc? And Anne's like, I don't know, I didn't grow up in that, I, I don't grow up. And he's like, yeah, Anne was like, I don't know, I, didn't, I don't know, I didn't grow up in the 90s. I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> I was, I was born in 01. I was born in 2001. And I know what a disc is. And, and if, okay, so Anne's 13. That means she's born in 08. At least 08. Yeah, she was born in 08. She had to have been born in 08. Because it's, or, no. No, I'm thinking. Amphibia came out in 2019. Okay. Anne would have been born then in 06. Anne would have been born in 06. And so you're telling me she wouldn't know what a disc is? <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> That's stupid. I don't know. That's just me. I really didn't look. I mean, I got I got a laugh, but at the same time, I was like, oh, come on. That's just, come on. But, um, like I said, Sprig uh, was able to fix it. Uh, he was able to shut it down, and they were going to get out of there. And amphibia fashion, you got to have your big explosion, and that's exactly what happens. Like, I love how they escape the, the ruins, and they're like, yeah, we did it. And Hop Hop's like, hey, remember this rule? Don't always celebrate because you never know what can happen. Boom. Like, literally, the giant explosion happens. And the the kids are, Ann and Sprig are happy. But then, of course, they're like, sorry we did that. And Hop Hop is, he at first is very mad. But then one, you know, Sprig and Ann explain kind of their side of the argument. And two, they see Polly and Bessie just go on ham. Like, like it's like a hot like Polly with Bessie like you can imagine what they're doing so Hop Hop basically comes through and says okay okay you know what yeah 
you know, it's like, well, I mean, obviously Sprig and Anne are like, we're sorry we went like that. We promise we'll behave. And Hop Up's like, no, I get it. I get it. We shouldn't be so focused on this trip. We're going, I mean, you know, it's like, we'll, we'll make stops here and there. And it's like, yeah, it makes sense. Like, yes, the objective is still important, but you know, this is, even Anne acknowledges the fact that this is, this is their first time doing this. So they should be taking it in you know they shouldn't be so focused on going to this place you know they should be looking they should be taking a stop and looking around because life moves pretty fast and unless and if you don't stop and look around you might miss it <sighs> how many people are gonna get that reference <laughs> um yeah so it seems like everything's all nice and dandy and then from the ruins comes this giant mech oh boy um it, um, yeah, uh, that, um, that's left open. I really am intrigued to see where the mech, how the mech it will come into play. I mean, the family's on a, on a wagon with Bessie pulling it, and this is a mech. Who knows how the speed will differ. And we all, and this whole thing wraps up with, obviously, with them no longer at the house in Wartwood, they're on this wagon they're going through amphibia of course the new outro is them is sprig and Anne, uh, sprig and hop hop and polly they're all on top of the wagon and they're moving at night really nice and i like and also new a new new style to the outro because in the original because in the first season was more you had more of a guitar with like some strings this one it's a banjo like you have the dun, dun, dun. Like it's still the it's still the outro theme, but it's with a banjo now instead of a guitar. And I like that. I really do. I like it feels nice, it feels peaceful, but again, you see them moving. Like you see it moving. So there's there's still something that, there I mean, obviously the banjo you you get you get you like it. You get used to it. Um I mean I got used to it by the by the end of the second episode, so <laughs> really quick. Um yeah. But yeah, overall, I thought this was a fun episode. But I I really like the new mystery that we have with these uh, mysterious new technology that was from the past. Again, Breath of the Wild Zelda vibes. So I'm excited to see where that goes. But for now, solid episode, and we have a giant mech chasing us <laughs> very slowly by the looks of it. But you know, it's a mech, so who knows what'll happen. But, yeah. Alright, uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you liked it, leave a like. If you want to leave a comment, if you want to leave, leave a comment. Subscribe. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. You don't have to. I'm just saying. So, thank you for watching. And, see you in the next one. God, I gotta, I gotta do better with these outros.